Hello everyone, how are you all? Hope you are all happy and healthy and well and welcome to Holyrood Park in the shadow of Arthur's seat right there uh, uh, right uh, there there, there it is, there it is, Arthur's seat um, on a beautiful beautiful Friday morning the sun is shining it's lovely which is really nice because the last couple of days it's just been it's just been raining and miserable and the sun is really low and in my eyes it's going to be that kind of video today uh, anyway today we're going to tell you three legends of Arthur's Seat Arthur's Seat is I love I've said this many, 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 many times. I love Arthur's Seat. I love the fact that we have this honking, grey, massive, mount, not mountain, hill, extinct, dormant, extinct volcano in the middle of the city. And we've never done anything with it. You know, we haven't built houses up it. There isn't. There isn't a cafe at the top, there isn't all, I love that it's just been left, apart from the odd path, footpath, that it's just been left. It's just been left exactly how it was, and it will remain that way. You know, it's not as if we're going to start building on it now, in a world where we, we try to look after our history, and we try to, um, and, and things are kept the way they were. So I love the fact that this, is how it will look for my daughter and soon-to-be son when they grow up. And it was exactly the same when I grew up, and it was exactly the same when my mum and dad grew up. You know what I mean? It'll be the same if, if in the future I have grandchildren. It will look like that, hopefully. Um, and I love that. And it's, it's steeped in legend. It's obviously played a part in Edinburgh history quite a bit. This area has played a part in Edinburgh history. This used to be a horrible, boggy area here until Prince Albert, um, Queen Victoria's husband, because they loved Scotland. They absolutely loved Scotland. The, the formation of this, how this looks now, is because of them. Or because of him, actually. Um, this was really horrible, peaty, boggy land until he had it all drained away, apart from a small lock that's still down there, and uh, built uh, the, the, the road up and that goes round and everything. That was all him, um, and made it a far more hospitable area um, with this beautiful big park and, and Holyrood Palace right there. So it's 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 and there's other times armies have have been here and. And I'm sure there were settlements on Arthur's Seat many, 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 many moons ago. But, as well as the historical fact, there is legends. Everything, as you can imagine, has legends. So let's talk about three of the legends. Number one. Number one. It's actually to do with this uh, grass. Grass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds silly, I know, but first legend is grass. And it's to do with May Day. Um, the beginning of May, and actually, right now, this gives a great example of it, and the dew that is on the ground here. On the beginning of May, on May Day, it has been known, or legend says, that young women will climb up Arthur's seat and wash their face in the May dew, which apparently will keep them youthful and beautiful for another year, I would imagine, then they have to come and do it again. I've, I've, all these legends are, are probably fairly well known to most Edinburgh folk, um, I would imagine, because it's not as if, well, these are ancient forgotten things, you know what I mean? I don't know if people still do this. Um, it seems like something that eventually will become a festival, you know what I mean? This is a legend that you could build a festival around. Early morning, all, all the young uh, women, or women of any age, uh, will come and wash, 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 they will wash their face in the, the May Day dew um, to keep them young and beautiful. And there's a poem, there's a poem actually for this, and if you will allow me to hold the poem, uh, I will read for said poem to you all now. So, the poem is called Old Reeky. And it was written by uh, Robert Ferguson in 1773. So, you know, we're going back a little bit. We're going back a little bit. 
On May Day, in a fairy ring, we've seen them round St Anton's Spring. Fra grass the collar dew drapes ring, to wean to wheat their een, and water uh, clear and crystal spring, to send them clean. Here we go. We poem there about washing your face in the May Day dew, and that's legend number one. So if you happen to be here, if you happen to be here on May Day, any year, come down, wash your face, and the magic of Arthur's seat will keep you young and beautiful for at least one year more. Legend number two, the sleeping dragon. Now, I'm trying, it's difficult, the sun is like right there, so I know it's quite backlit. It can look beautiful, but, but it is right there. Um, the sleeping dragon. Legend is that this beautiful whole thing is a sleeping dragon. That one day a dragon that was terrorizing us all fell asleep and became a mountain, as they do. This is an old legend. This goes back way, 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 way long. I, I, I don't, it's so old I don't even have a date. Um, it's just a tale, it's a myth, it's a legend about what Arthur's seat was. And the tale goes that Edinburgh and all the surrounding area, East Lothian, Mid Lothian, however far a dragon could fly, was terrorised by a huge dragon. Let's call it Arthur. Um, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'll come back to that in a minute actually. Um, yeah, this dragon used to terror, terrorise and, and fly around and eat all the livestock and all these things. And the, the, the locals had no idea what to do. They did not know what to do. How to stop this horrendous dragon from eating all their livestock and, and generally ruining their day-to-day -day life. Until it essentially gorged itself. The tale goes that the dragon eight and eight and eight because there's nothing the locals could do nothing we could do about it and it started to get fatter and lazier until eventually it lay down on top of a mound fell asleep and never woke up and became what is arthur's seat now now there's a couple of uh things i've read about why this tale possibly came about. It could be as old as the fact that it's an ex-volcano, it's an extinct volcano. That makes sense, that this beast eventually went to sleep and never woke up again. That makes perfect sense. If you think about it that way, you're like, yeah. I bet if that's the case, well, that's old. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a long, long time ago. And I don't think any, I don't think any of us were here, not me personally, when this was a volcano. I don't think this was really a sort of livable area. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine that. It could be, it could be, but I doubt it. Um, the other uh, thing that people have said is because actually the shape of it looks like a curled up kind of lizardy thing. If you take Salisbury Crag here as the tail curling round and then the hump and then the head over there, you can kind of imagine, you can kind of imagine that that's what, however, how, who knows how these legends get started, but that is the legend of how Arthur's Seat became Arthur's Seat, because it was a dragon that fell asleep. And I like that. I like that. A good old Scottish dragon. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Again, who knows? Who knows how this started? But legends are good. Legends are great. I love a good story. Just while we're here at Arthur's Seat, I always think this is an underappreciated part of Arthur's Seat here. Just in case you wonder where we are, there's Holyrood Palace right there. Right there, that's it right there. Holyrood Park, right there. And again, Arthur's Seat, which you've seen a few times now. But yeah, I think this old well is, isn't it lovely? Isn't it, isn't it nice? I think it's an uh, underappreciated feature. Let's have a wee read. St Margaret's Well, this unique well house dates from the late 15th century. It originally stood at Restalring Close, 
uh, sorry, forgive me, at Restelrig, comma, close to the church. And its design is a miniature copy of St. Trudon's, Trudeau's Isle. In 1860, it was removed from its first site, which was then encroached by a railway uh, and was reconstructed in its present position near a natural spring. You can still hear water running. However, I don't know if that water is just coming. Oh, echo! If that water is just coming from the fact that it's been raining and it's leaking through. You can't really see, but there is a whole sort of area in there with a little... Why is it people always put money in things? That's not a wishing well. But, yeah. Who knows who's got the key for that to open up and have a look in. But yeah, isn't that lovely? I think it's just underappreciated. I think it's a very cool place to come and get pictures. Everyone start doing Instagrammable pictures here because, you know, maybe it'll give it a little bit of love and it'll get tidied up if it start, starts to get a little bit of love. Anyway, moving on. Last on our three legends of Arthur's Seat. Its name. We don't, and I'm sure that a lot of people are going to comment on this one. But there's no 100% definition, story, tale, proof, written down legend, anything that confirms why it's called Arthur's Seat. Now, when I was young, I do remember hearing a couple of things. Um, and from my research right now, I found at least two or, or, uh, different things. But no one actually knows why it's called Arthur's Seat. We've got no idea. There's one that makes perfect sense to me, which I will tell you last. Um, but, yeah, we don't know. I remember when I was at school, there was a legend that it was named after a king in Fife. Because obviously it's the Kingdom of Fife. Scotland used to be split up into lots of different places and have various different rulers before it all became, before it was, when it was the Picts and things like that, uh, until it all went under one rule, one, one crown, uh, so to speak. Um, and apparently the King in Fife at the time, or at one point, was called Arthur. And that became Arthur's seat. Now, I do like that. But I don't get why, if that was the case, that there would be a hill in Fife called Arthur's Seat. I don't get why it would be in Edinburgh. However, going with King Arthur's, and feel free to look this up. Again, I'm not a historian. I'm not a historian. I've never ever claimed to be a historian. Uh, one of the other stories is King Arthur himself. I read two things about this. One, that, that this was supposed to be the legendary site of Camelot. I find that one harder to, to digest, because I thought Camelot was supposed to be in like Somerset or something down south. Um, but that's one story that is named after King Arthur because that's where Camelot was. There's also another tale that they just came here and visited and set up a, a, a fort or, or thing there as well. Not not Camelot, so to speak, but visited and loved it and 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 Arthur claimed that, I suppose. Um, again, I think these are people romanticising really why it's called Arthur's Seat because probably the most famous Arthur in the world, apart from the classic Dudley Moore uh, classic film, is probably Arthur, uh, King Arthur. And Merlin. So I get I get where that one's came from. I get where that one's came from. That's 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 the legends. However, there's an actual theory. There's a theory theory, which not really what this video is supposed to be about, but I will give you the theory of why people think, or one man thought it was called Arthur's Seat. There was a historian, <laughs> sounds, sounds like a bomb. There was a historian called William Maitland who thinks he knows why it's called Arthur's Seat. And apparently it goes back to the old Gaelic. Sorry about the backlit there. I'm just trying to keep Arthur's Seat in the shot, but the sun's right behind it. Um, and I'm sorry, I've got my notes here. I hope that's okay. Um, and according to Maitland, he thinks uh, that it's actually an Arthur uh, was including a, a title 
uh, of a translation in Gaelic. Now let me read this to you. The Gaelic is, he thinks, Ard na sed, Ard na sed, which means height of arrows in Gaelic. And then over time, Ard na sed has become Arthur's seat. I can see that. I can see that being the case. No idea if that, but no one knows. No one knows. That, that's completely logical, but we don't actually know why it's called Arthur's Seat. And I kind of, I kind of love the mystery of it. I kind of love the fact that this enormous, enormous, enormous hill in the middle of a city that you can see from anywhere in the city, we all know what it's called. We all know it. We all recognise it. And none of us know why it's called that. Don't you like that? Is it, doesn't that give it a bit of mystery and legend? It's not something hidden away. And you know I like my little hidden away things where I can go, oh, here's a little bit, here's a little bit. If you just go around here and you duck down here, there is a parrot basket and everyone loves a parrot basket. The legend of the parrot basket here in Edinburgh. But um, no one knows. No one knows. And we will never know. We can speculate. We can speculate, we can make up other tales and see if they catch on. But no one will ever actually know why it's called Arthur's Seat. And I kind of love that. Three legends of Arthur's Seat. If you've enjoyed that today, as always, please remember, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. We have surpassed, we have passed 15,000 subscribers. Thank you all so, 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 so much. I cannot believe that that's where we are. It genuinely makes me so honoured. <laughs> I really genuinely am. I don't know any other word for it. So thank you all of you who uh, who subscribe and I hope more of you will come join Clan Broodford. Become a patron and have a Zoom chat with me as well. Why don't you? I'm looking forward to this month's one. I think there's a few new people that have joined. I'm hoping they'll come and join on and say hello. But um, we'll, I think we'll leave it there. Till next time, bye humans.